Welcome to this week's episode of Leadership Soundbites with Rocco Michelle and our super extra special guest, Christopher Henry. Christopher, we all worked together when we were at Sutter Health. You've been on the podcast before, but it's been a minute. And um, you are, and I forgot to ask, Senior VP of Talent Management Thank at, you. Yeah, at yeah. Bath & Beyond. Yeah, I knew the where, I knew the what. <laughs> I'm going to gonna fix it. Content. Bath and Body Works, everybody says Bed, Bath and Beyond. Yeah. And we're doing a, a, a financially a little bit better than they are. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. A lot better. So here I go again. Let me say it right. I won't cut it out, but let me say it right. Um, I know Christopher Henry. Um, senior VP, talent management. Is it an acquisition too or just talent management? No, yeah, the whole kit and caboodle. So oh, you yeah, have talent acquisition, and management, and learning, and change management. I love it. The longest job title in history. <laughs> so um, with Bath and Body Works, I got it right. Yes. And I, and I love the different products and all the different scents. So... It's just, I'm looking forward to my seasonal scents coming out. <laughs> they are rolling out. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go shopping. About <laughs> month now. <laughs> promotion about Body Works as well That's as. Right. <laughs> so this week's topic is, um, and Christopher so graciously agreed to join us, is on lessons in leadership. So it's that like we talked offline, it's those things that you look back on your career and you're going, at the time, it may have seemed like a no big deal, or maybe at the time you knew it was a big deal. But you look back and it's those kind of pivotal moments or those things that guided you in your career, you know, on the journey. The flip side of that, when I think about it, because I think pivotal moments are like the upside, mm -hmm. are those other things that if you look back on it and you had a wand, a magic wand that you could just wave, and say, you know what, if I could change something and have a do-over, that would be that thing. <laughs> so if anything like that stands out for you. So as always, we're going to kick it off with a quote. We talked about a few of them before we got hit record. Um, one of them that really jumps out is Henry Ford. And, and there was a lot of failures in the industry that he was in. But failure is the opportunity to begin again more intelligently. And what I love about that quote is I think about it because I'm, I coach leaders. I coach myself to look at failure as a gift and an opportunity. Mm -hmm. That being said, that we're, we're not going to go keep repeating the stuff to where we have a different quote that says, if we keep doing the same thing over and over again, expect different results. That's the definition of insanity, right? So I think the more intelligently part takes us in a different trajectory to go, okay, what did I just learn from that? So that thing doesn't happen again. Um, there are a number of opportunities when I think about my career as I've gone through, and I know Roko's smiling because you're probably in that bucket too. But I'm curious, Christopher, what stands out for you and what's on your mind around your leadership journey? Because it's it's been a variety of different organizations, a lot of different roles. Yes. Um, and so what's on your mind? Yeah, so as you mentioned, quite a few industries, everything from what, telecommunications, healthcare, hospitality, now retail. Um, I've been lucky enough to do all of those things um, or work in all of those industries, but doing pretty much um, the same work. So I've learned to make talent management um, act, uh, applicable in, in various um, industries. Um, with that said, the um, failure being an opportunity to start again, um, better informed, more intelligently, et cetera, resonated with me because I think early in my career, I worked very hard um, not to make any mistakes and to be perfect. <laughs> and as we know, uh, no one is perfect. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, and, you know, I don't know if that is is connected, if I 
probably if I did some deep psychological analysis, <laughs> it could be connected to those things, uh, you know, imposter syndrome and yeah. et cetera, et cetera. But looking back, um, I think I wish I would have allowed myself um, those failures or to fail fast, mm -hmm. take accountability, learn from it and start again, because it's so much work um, trying to navigate through what you don't know um, and not failing so that you will learn and know. And it can actually slow things down. Um, you know, if I had a failed and, and learned from some of those things in the past, I would have gotten to better solutions a lot faster as well. So, yeah, that really resonated with me. Generally, I say that um, when I look back, there isn't really anything that I would do over um, because that makes you, you know, who you are mm -hmm. might have accelerated some things. Um, so to to stay with what I normally say, <laughs> I would have just accelerated those failures because I failed nonetheless. I just dragged it out. <laughs> <laughs> so Christopher, what, you know, as, as you think about that evolution, right, and failing faster, what point in your career, you know, helped you to see, oh, I actually can learn and it's very freeing for me to be a leader that doesn't have to be the one who knows all the mm -hmm. answers, you know? So was there a person that helped you or was there a moment or a situation where you had this aha moment about that? Yeah, I, I believe it would be um, a stretch assignment that I had once moving from on what was a national role to a regional role. Mm -hmm. um, and generally we think, oh, well, the national role is a, is a bigger role, um, but the regional role was actually a promotion. So it was a step up and it sat me in operations. And so I was used to being in, in, in more administrative roles. Um, and so that was where, you know, one, you're new in operations, um, and that's where mistakes can be seen much more quickly. <laughs> there isn't bureaucracy to cover it up. <laughs> and so um, making those mistakes there, um, learning from those and really getting a lot of support from operators, which I just did not expect. Yeah. And they're like, well, we make mistakes too. That's how we're able to plan for next year or you know that we're able to archive um, um, processes and and reuse those um, for the future, so we can avoid it. So somebody's got to make the mistake mm -hmm. for us to capture them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, love that. Oh, can I ask one more question? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. <laughs> She's looking at it because I'm ready because I'm yeah, like, my brain's going. <laughs> no, so because you're in talent acquisition. And I think about leadership traits, you know, there's mm -hmm. been lots of research on, you know, what's the ideal leader, you know, as far as the, the characteristics or the traits that mm -hmm. they need to have. As you think about, you know, your your beginning of your career to where you are now, what what are those key traits that you would say are for leaders? So I would say um, strategic agility um, and that I generally um, have always had. And maybe, you know, that's sort of why I'm drawn to change management as well. I really um, work well in concepts or able to adjust. Um, but, uh, you know, again, going back to that, that failure piece, the other is being able to fail and take accountability um, for those and, and learn. Um, and so... I think we're so, I was so busy trying not um, to go down that path or to make a mistake. I was actually inhibiting um, some of the learning um, that, that would take place. So, but that definitely is one. And I think once I was able to accept that, 
um, and learn from it, it actually accelerated mm -hmm. um, my career. Uh, and believe it or not, I had moved from a senior manager role to that stretch assignment as a regional um, director. And um, the successes that I had towards the end of that one year, it was just 12 months, it quickly prepared me um, for a vice president role in another organization. And, and it set me up perfectly. So um, I think it was meant to be, and mm -hmm. I, I was actually fighting against it and didn't even know it. <laughs> Well, that's funny because we look back on the step that were pivotal moments in your career, right? And so you're going into ops. I have to wonder because operations is a completely different world. Mm -hmm. um, when you step into that, how did it, I don't want to lead the witness, right? No. But, but what, I have to imagine that it had to have an impact on you when you came back out of ops into support services roles. Um Oh God! Yeah. I mean, that's where my brain goes. It's like, so what? What happened around that? I mean, what did it yeah. do for you, and and how were you different as a result? Yeah. So it was. It was one of those things that was true. They call it a stretch assignment, a stretch rotation. It literally was a stretch, and it was a stretch of skill sets, mm -hmm. um, a stretch of um my ability to take what had made me successful in an administrative role. Um, and apply it in a very different way mm -hmm. um, in operations, as well as learn um, new things. And then at the end of that, going back into an administrative role, um, one, I believe it made me um, much more pragmatic. Mm -hmm. um, and two, it made me a much better business partner for operations. Mm -hmm. So they we they would then have, you know, not only them advocating for themselves, but me being able to say, oh, I was in that environment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what we're coming up here with, that strategy is just good on paper. It doesn't play out that way in real life. <laughs> exactly. I, I, go ahead, Rocco. I was just going to say, I, I what when when you said uh you know having an appreciation really for operations now as you go back and just for you've gotten this additional perspective mm -hmm. and um you know that that's such a important piece of it right because sometimes when you stay in one lane you only have that perspective and as a leader you really do need to understand every position within the organization so that you can have that those different perspectives to your point where, and mm -hmm. I think I cut you off, so I apologize, but you know, around, around oh, that, st that strategy isn't going to work because I've been there mm -hmm. and they, they deal with these things, you know, so. I, uh, I, cause I have to wonder, it's like, once, once you do it to me, it was like going to Gemba to understand what's going. So Christopher, you, when you and I first started working at Sutter, we went on Gemba visits and I remember you were new in the role. You would announce to everyone that you were going to go start visiting, whatever. And I said, who's your coach? And you said, I don't have one. Do you want to be my coach? Uh -huh. <laughs> so we ended up going and observing. And I remember there was one, um, we traveled for a while. It was further south to go see someone who was doing physician development. And your eyes were open. Mm -hmm. so I think it's that kind of thing that you knew you wanted to go, but but with what's your intention when you're going? Um, what information are you gathering? And then what do you do with that information once you have it? Um, and so I, for me, I look at that and connect it to that experience that you had mm -hmm. when you were in ops. Because my question is, how do you stay connected? Because you've had different industries. You know what, and, and I'm glad that you brought that up because that's still how I stay connected. So, mm -hmm. you know, obviously I'm in another administrative role. Yeah. <laughs> However, um, I have teams that support the business and are embedded in the business. And although we are not, uh, you know, a lean organization, um, if you will, like Lean Six Sigma, mm -hmm. I have carried those practices. Mm -hmm. So um, 
I started off monthly in my first year. Now I do quarterly in my second year, but it's sort of a going to Gimba. Mm -hmm. And so I go with my training team to our um, distribution centers and we have nine of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I will travel to a couple of them um, each month and take a walk through with a member of my team and then one of the managers or supervisors um, on from the floor in, in our distribution centers. Um, and then similarly, I do the same thing with the stores. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and so it's been very eye-opening. Mm -hmm. um, stores, um, I had worked briefly in retail before, so it brought up a lot of things that um, I knew and completely forgot that I knew because I didn't have to use it. <laughs> and some even newer things because they've evolved um, since then. Um, and for our distribution centers, I've never worked in that environment before. So it was spectacular um, learning and mm -hmm. seeing people that are working on conveyor belts and um, those that have robotics in some because it's a modern distribution center mm -hmm. and others that are still, in, do, still doing things by hand um, because they have not um, been um, modernized or, or remodeled yet. Um, so that's, the, again, that has been incredible. I do go into it from our coaching with a set of objectives that I have for myself for learning that I then share with the people that are leading me through, mm -hmm. but I send it to them ahead of time and say, now close my gaps. What is it that I should know that I don't know I should know? Mm -hmm. And let's add that to the list. Yeah. Christopher, when you're, when you're talking about this, what's coming, what's surfacing for me is, you know, you have this leadership role. You're, you may not be directly over those teams. There might mm -hmm. be layers of managers between you. How do you, as a leader, what, what are some of the lessons that you have as, as a leader around inspiring and motivating teams as as you get further up the the leadership chain, if you will? Yeah, it's really being um, one connected um, inquisitive, um, and not afraid to be vulnerable. So I mm -hmm. have no problem letting people in a distribution center know I have never done that before. Um, um, and I appreciate the work that you do because I know without you, our stores would not be filled and our customers would not be able to put anything in a basket. Mm -hmm. It's all because of you guys. Yeah. Um, and so I go in like that as if I was a, 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 a naive person, not even in the industry, and I let them, you know, lead. Um, I'm very aware um, of the fact that um, there are some, you know, level differences there, and I don't want that to um, influence them in any way, which would then inhibit my learning. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I dress the way that they dress. I'm making sure they call me by my first name <laughs> and all those sorts of things. Um, and I ask questions and, you know, and ask questions. And I, I, I will, if the person seems, you know, nervous or I also like, like, this is not a judgmental. This is not a gotcha question. I literally don't know. And you yeah. do yeah. <laughs> love it. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. I um I just in my head I'm going through all this stuff thinking how has it how has it impacted how you lead knowing what you now know about the industry that you're in. And if you think mm -hmm. about each role that you went into, what what's the value in it for you? What is the um I, th I think there's a um, great value and it's from a lot of different um, perspectives. So one, it allows me and the teams that I have that are supporting the business um, to create things 
um, programs, you know, whether it's training, whether it is hiring tools, um, whether it's succession plan, like all those mm -hmm. sorts of things, but doing it in a way that it works um, mm -hmm. for that business. Um, it also brings value because they are active participants. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing designed for them without them. Because mm -hmm. um, I've learned how important that is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and not to go in with those assumptions of, well, you know, this is talent management and I've been doing this over 20 years. So, <laughs> you know, well, this is talent management in a whole different environment. Mm -hmm. And you may know the mechanics of, but do you know how to make it work in that environment? And the environment is the environment, like you were talking about, a distribution center, whatever mm -hmm. their scheduling is like, the culture that they have you know, what they've been used to in the past. Because when you talk about environment, there's a lot of things at play. Absolutely. And it has to do with where are the people starting from? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so all that stuff, I think you'd be hard pressed to close those gaps without going to where the people that are doing the work are doing the work. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I just... Um, it's a, it's a, it's a cool, it's a cool thing and a cool practice. And I, and I have to assume I should not do that. So I'm not going to do that. Um, <laughs> what, what, I'm going to say this differently. What impact of any has it had on the people that report to you or that are on your team? Uh, so I think it's had very positive impact um, for those that are on my team. So one, they have a great appreciation um, for the interest um, that I show uh, and the fact that they have a voice. Mm -hmm. um, so we literally, you know, work together. It's not you work for me, you mm -hmm. work with me. Yeah. Um, and so that's sort of been my um, and they are able to, you know, push back. So I also use some of those um, leadership techniques that I teach other people. <laughs> and I'll let them know, look, I am. And it's funny because I, I try to be really transparent with them as well, which they appreciate. And I'll, you know, ask a question or something comes up and I'll say, I'm intentionally going to shut my mouth because I don't want to be the leader that influences mm -hmm. what was going to come out of your mouth. <laughs> and so they are able um, to share things that often does yeah. you know, change or influence my perspective. And that but may you... not have gotten in the room otherwise. Yeah. yeah. What would you, what advice would you give an aspiring leader? So um I I think the advice would be and I'm kind of you know looking at my younger self the advice I would have given me as well is to have that um transparency um with respect um, mm -hmm. and, and courageous authenticity. Um, and people really appreciate when you are, um, you know, you're, you're approachable and, and you're real and you're open to um, hearing and receiving and even acting on um, hints, tips, feedback, et cetera, that they provide. Love it. Um, I'm, I'm jotting notes um, with a lot of stuff, and I and I wrote and I wrote down because I that's what I do, right? <laughs> um, the phrase "courageous authenticity" struck out stuck out to me. Yeah. Um, what does that mean to you? Because there was some energy around it. Yeah, for me, it is quite often because of the. I guess, perception, stereotypes, et cetera, that people have of what leadership is supposed to look like, mm -hmm. um, particularly like in a Western or industrialized um, culture, which 
isn't always the most beneficial um, for uh, for a culture or an environment that you're working in. And so specifically what I mean of, about that is um, not being afraid to be vulnerable and not having all of the answers. Mm -hmm. um, if you had every answer, then you know, an enterprise could be made up of just you and they're not made that way. <laughs> or or you could uh you could rival the the knowledge that chat GPT has. Right. right. <laughs> um you could, you could you could be your own AI. Oh Lord. <laughs> so I, I, I think that courageous authenticity one allows people to um, respect you and who you are, but it also allows them to see the value they bring and that you hold for them. Yeah. Um, I, I, one more, um, when you were talking that I thought about then is that you're, you're at a place in your career that for the most part, I'm going to air quote this, Christopher, mm -hmm. it's easier to step in and be courageously authentic mm -hmm. because of the position that you have in the organization. Um, what would you say or advice that you would give somebody or coaching you would give someone who's maybe not a senior VP in an organization, but is stepping in to try and be courageously vulnerable or courageously authentic? And the terrain organization environment isn't something that they feel comfortable being in, which I think is where the underlying courageous part comes in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what would you say? I think, you know, one, they've probably already kind of set back and um, observed the the organization the culture the dynamics etc mm -hmm. and then try to figure out the safest ways mm -hmm. um to insert that courageous authenticity and and quite often that allows other people yeah. um, to do the same but again specifics for you you know our listeners viewers etc um, what was shared with me um, from a leader, uh, and because I was hard-headed and didn't get it later, a coach shared the same thing with me, <laughs> and I decided to accept it. <laughs> um, well, I guess I need to hear it again. Yeah. <laughs> but it's that creating the space in the room to do so, like, hey, you know, this may not be the best answer or best solution, but this is the thinking off the top of my head. Or, you know, let me just put something out there and, you know, we can squash it or build on it. Um, and if people are squashing it um, in a very positive way, inquire as to, you know, mm -hmm. why wouldn't this work? What might it look like? Doug? Because we know there are some people that squash just the squash. So we uh, yeah. <laughs> get around those individuals. Professional <laughs> squatters. Right. Squashers, squatters. <laughs> or that boomerang back to them. How might we do this differently? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I need you to participate. Um, but those are the sort of things that I think open the door for me, mm -hmm. those types of statements to be more courageous with what I brought through the door afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's almost like you're not married to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You're mm -hmm. going to throw out a thought or a suggestion. The other thing that comes to mind for me, if depending on where you sit in the organization, the courageous authenticity doesn't have to be up. Right. right? If, if it's not safe. But mm -hmm. to your point, I love the call out as a leader, title or otherwise, we have the opportunity to create the space that you're talking about mm -hmm. so that we can step in and be courageously authentic in the space that's in our span of control, sphere of influence, and potentially influence others around creating similar spaces to be courageously yeah. authentic. Um, because a lot of times it's not safe and be can be career limiting depending on where the up is. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. That's what comes to mind for me. I, um, I so appreciate this time. I always appreciate time in the room with you. Um, and Roko, you too. So here's my question that we're going to end with is what is, what is one thing or two things that you want people listening to walk away with in this topic of lessons in leadership? What stands out for you? So number one for me is the learning agility. I have a friend that says that she is under um, constant construction. And I think we are all under construction. Yeah. <laughs> and so just kind of understanding and being one with that and and, and that sort of continuous learning. Uh, and, and, you know, you know, there's tons of like, you know, research and assessments and blah, 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 blah on um, learning agility mm -hmm. because the landscape is constantly changing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love that one. I think about growth mindset and and like yes. I tell people, I'm going to be learning and growing and doing stuff. It's like I'm in an AI mastery class right now, right? Why? Mm -hmm. Why not? Why not? You just keep reinventing yourself. Yeah. Well, and I, yeah, I, just, I just, I have this curiosity to keep learning, growing, and then I can bring nuggets forward, whatever. But I tell people until I'm six feet under or I'm on an urn on someone's mantle. I mean, it's going to be a constant. Yeah. Thank you. Rocco, what's on your mind? You know, it's funny that he said agility, because that's what stood out to me. There, there were two words that stood out to me was agility and transparency. Mm -hmm. um, because I agree with you around agility. And it, I think it goes back to the quote that we said at the very beginning. Um, you learn from your failures. And if you can learn to adapt as you learn from those failures, that, that's making, that allows you to be agile. Don't be so stuck in either beating yourself up about the failure or just being stuck on your way of thinking but if you're able to learn from it, then it it allows you to be agile. And then the other one around transparency is, you know, when you're transparent about what you what you know or what you don't know, um, it allows you to connect with other people mm -hmm. and build those relationships that will help you grow in and and expand your your knowledge through those relationships because again the the collective mind is much greater than the mm -hmm. the single mind so i just i loved that the agility and transparency the transparency part when you said that it's like if when you are transparent to so your point christopher when you're going and saying i don't know mm -hmm. you're opening the door for people to step in and fill that gap with something they know. And you've literally leveled the playing field. So it's mm -hmm. not about titles. It's just about, you know, what are we coming to the table with? And what do you know that I don't know that I can learn from and vice versa? I literally had the visual of, remember the dancing man? The, oh, the, yeah. the, the video where it starts out with a single that. dancer, oh, right? Yeah. A single dancer. And then the, the he lets <laughs> the, you know, he has the next person come in and dances. But the guy doesn't dance exactly like him. And he actually brings in all these other yes. people with him. So it's like my, my mind was was going. Wow. That's what I've been working on visuals on things. And, yeah. and that that's an interesting connection <laughs> on that one. But yeah, so it, but, but it is the it's the invitation in and open the door and other people can step in. Um, I think for me, when what it was so funny listening to you talk, Christopher, because I think about all the coaching, all the leadership development, because at one point I reported up into your org. Um, but I think about all that stuff and and all the little sound bites through that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and they're, they're little tweaks around how we, um, how we are at leadership. And I, I think if you look back on your journey or all of us would map it out, it, it wasn't this, you can easily speak to it now. This is my style and this is whatever. But this was like over years yes, of yes. going, here's this layer. And then, oh, that's going to do this tweak to this, to where for me, it's the, wherever you're at in your leadership journey, whatever level, it's to your point, the continuous development, but it's the, it's the tweaks over time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that, you know, that you learn and you get feedback and then you're like to your point i heard it before and i guess i had to hear it again 
Um, I think that's it. It's, it's give yourself grace. Um, you know, what's a little bit better look like. Mm -hmm. Um, and that it's the same thing, whether you're a senior VP or some other role, you're still going to be tweaking something to get a little bit better at it. But the Absolutely. foundation is there that was built over time. Yeah. Can I add a bonus? Yes, please. I love bonuses. <laughs> bonus tip. And for no um, extra money, you're going to get But it would be um, validation and appreciation um, of others. And so um, when I do those walks, and I know it was baked in the training that I had years ago, and I continue to use it. Um, one, I thank the individuals that took out the time to, you know, walk me through, but I validate the value that it brought by actually telling them something that I did learn new from them. Oh, I like that. And so it, 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 this was a great use of my time. I didn't know X, Y, and Z, and you brought that forward. That's going to make what I do better. Love your contribution. I think I might have to add that to my Gimba walk uh, process. I feel <laughs> like that. And I, and, I, and I think it's powerful because the, the reality of it is you're going to be looking to fill in those gaps, right? Because you've mm -hmm. set the intention for yourself. You're going to be looking and then you're sharing it instead of just holding it to yourself so that people understand, did they get what they were looking for? Did they not get it? Was it not value add? And it's along the same lines of this and, and maybe you've done it and I'm trying to be more intentional myself mm -hmm. is I'll see somebody and in my head, I'm like, God, it's a really great color on them. And all it does is stay in my head. Uh-huh. Don't leave it in your head. Let's <laughs> know. Yeah. That you know, you appreciate, you observed it, you noticed it, whatever that is. Um, because to Roko's point earlier, that's where the connections just continue to strengthen. Yes. yes. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you for this. I appreciate the time in the room with you and Roko. Um, this has been later. Nice. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, this has been Leadership Soundbites with Roko and Michelle and our very special guest, Christopher Henry. Until next time, please like, share, subscribe, and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Thank you.